Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to do a real estate construction loan. And so this is a financial modeling video and I have a lot of other tutorials and real estate investing related videos on my channel so feel free to take a look at those if you're into commercial real estate or real estate investing in general. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a model that's going to be able to handle uh, ground up construction. And so I just want to walk through this model very briefly, and then I'm going to actually teach you step by step how to create a model like this. And so if, if you want to get into real estate um, at a higher level, at an analyst kind of job, then this is going to be key for you to know. It's going to be a slightly more advanced video. If you need some more basic training, feel free to check out my website. I have some courses down in the description and also subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my other videos. So let's get right into it. Um, this model is modeling a multifamily development. And so let's go through the assumptions and just the basics of the model first so that you can have some context and then let's go into the blank file which I, I will also have on my website so go feel free to download that right now and then let's go step by step together so our operating assumptions are we have a hundred units this is our monthly rent our monthly income these are our monthly expenses okay and then this is our lease up time and how long it takes to lease up so you'll see here that I've created a construction period a lease up period where we're leasing up the units and here we have a stabilized and then finally you know month 18 is our sale so this is not exactly realistic but it's a small uh, Excel sheet just for demonstration purposes our land costs our construction costs construction time start and end month oh this is wrong this should just link here um, and then we have our sources and uses, so our equity and our debt. So we're saying we're putting in 25% equity of the total cost uh, of this project. So we're, here's our land cost, our construction cost. Now, this is what makes the model circular or basically self-dependent is we have an operating deficit and then we also have an interest reserve or a financing reserve because what happens is during this uh, construction period and some of the lease up we have debt right and these are our draws so first the equity gets put in until we run out of equity here's our ending balance for the equity and now we're starting to draw on our loan and our loan balance is going up and so we're getting an interest expense here and so this money this thirty eight thousand dollars needs to come from somewhere and we don't have any uh, rental income so that capitalized interest is what it's called uh, flows into the sources and uses and that's where it's um, that's where it adds into the project cost and so the loan is actually going to fund some of that interest so the interest loan um, funds itself essentially and so that's what makes it circular because this financing affects the loan size and the loan size affects how much equity you're going to be putting in and that affects when you draw this which affects the interest rate which goes back into this affects the total cost which changes the debt again so it flows like that in a circle which is why you need to go in here uh, and formulas and settings and enable iterative calculations so this needs to be enabled so let's get right into it let's go into this file I've um, kept most of it running so so that we can save time basically so here's our operating expenses our rental income and our expenses this is our NOI here are our construction costs this is the sale here of the asset 19 million dollars and now we're gonna get into everything else which is what I like to call the iceberg so this is what you see here, you know, the ice, the tip of the iceberg, but really the bulk of the calculations is occurring uh, beneath the surface. And that's um, calculating all your interest and your loan and equity draws. 
So let's go in here and fill in these things. So for the sources and uses, our land costs, these are our land costs right here. Our construction costs, some, and I'm gonna go here to the construction costs. And I'm gonna just zoom in just so that you guys have a better view. Now the operating deficit will come to that as we build it. So our income, our expenses, our NOI, our construction costs, land costs, our sale cash flows, and this is our unlevered cash flow, which is our NOI plus our construction costs. And now we need to sum our operating deficit. And so the operating deficit basically occurs in this situation during the lease up where we have a lot of fixed expenses. So think about um, the real estate taxes, insurance, property managers. In the beginning, we're going to have a lot of these expenses, but we're not going to have the corresponding revenue. And so for here, for two months, we have an operating deficit. So the way that you do that is that we only want to capture the negative numbers here. So what we want to do is equal to the minimum, so smaller than zero. Anything that's smaller than zero will be captured. So what's smaller, zero or the NOI? So let's go, boom, do that. And I just pasted the formula, and as you can see, it's only catching the negative numbers of the NOI. And so that is our operating deficit. And if you wanted to know how I just copied the formula like that, I did control, I went control, uh, control shift arrow, and then I did control R to paste this formula across. So now let's go into the sources and uses. All of this should be a positive number. Boom, and then the operating deficit is going to be the negative of the sum of the operating deficit. Boom, and we can see that's here. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to freeze my panels so that that way we can scroll and we can always see here this on the left. Okay, so now before we build our interest expense and our capitalized interest formulas we need to start building our equity draws so let's build our equity draws our starting balance for the equity is going to be equal to the first or how much equity we're putting into the project and now are our draws so let's do the capitalized draws i like to make everything a positive number so I'm going to do the, so capitalized draws are only draws that require us to pay money um, to the project. And so that's going to be only these negative numbers, but I'm going to make it a positive. So I'm going to do negative of the minus of the min rather of this or zero. So uh, basically only negative numbers now will come in here and we'll flip the sign into a positive. And that just makes it a little easier for us to make these draw calculations. It's, it's not really required, but it kind of simplifies things a little bit. So now our draws, right? So we can only draw how much equity we have. So it's going to be the minimum of the equity of the capitalized cash flow to how much equity um, we have left, right? So we're going to show that once we run out of equity, um, we will not be able to fund anything else. So now I'm going to do the ending balance is equal to the starting balance minus how much we've drawn. And I'm going to take that all the way to the right. And now I'm going to do the starting balance is equal to the ending balance here for the following month. Copy that, right? So we can see how the starting balance is the ending balance of the previous month. And now I'm going to drag this guy all the way here to the right. And I did control R. So as we can see, I'm going to change this a little bit just so that it will be better for illustrative purposes. Maybe I'll put 10 million here. Let's see. Okay. This is, uh, I could be better, but it's okay. Anyway, so our first month we're drawing the 316,000. 
the next month the 224,000 and then the month after that we only have 1.642 million dollars available but we need 1.7 and so we don't have enough equity because we're taking the minimum, whichever is smaller, of the capitalized cash flow or the starting equity. So we don't have enough equity to cover this. And now this is when we're going to start um, drawing on our loan, right? So the starting balance on the loan is going to be zero. And the ending balance, well, let's just do that later. The starting balance will be the ending, the previous month's ending balance. Let's take that all the way to the right boom and now let's do the draws here so the draw will basically just be the difference between the capitalized cash flow and the equity draw so here it's zero let's take it all the way down to the right and here we are so here we see this month we did not have enough equity to cover the loan and we're um, accounting for that via the uh, debt balance here we're, we're drawing on the capital that is not available so the ending balance let's just do that so that will be the starting plus the draw and we're gonna do minus the payoff because later on we're gonna show you how to repay the loans boom so here it is right so this is our here we are accumulating uh, debt right and we can do the payoff I'll do the payoff here um, so it's going to be basically uh, just the minimum between the starting balance and the after debt cash flow right so in here we're basically this is going to be limited to paying off the lesser number of the construction loan or the sale so if we didn't have enough money to actually cover this whole uh, loan then we would only be able to pay what we still owe and here are the payoffs if we really want to we can do oh, well first let me paste this across uh, yeah so this is going to be a construction loan where all the money uh, goes towards uh, and here I need to do a max max zero okay just in case there's a negative number okay so what I did here was I did the minimum first I did the max let's go out and then go in so maximum so either this number is more than zero or zero gets applied and then in here it's the minimum between the outstanding balance and the after debt cash flow so it will only apply to a maximum of whatever this outstanding debt is and so some construction loans they're going to be interest only and you can watch some of my other videos or take my course and we'll go into more details but for this purpose for this example we're just going to be paying off with all the free cash flows that we have we're paying off the construction loan until there's something uh until we pay off the whole loan basically and so now this payoff we can do max and we can do zero and then we can do uh, the, this cash flow minus the payoff and so let's paste that and so this formula basically what it's doing is that if this is a negative number again it's going to be zero it's going to be whatever is some bigger value the zero or a negative number obviously zero is bigger than a negative number in this case that after that cash flow and then so now these guys are always zero because eighty thousand minus eighty thousand dollars in loan payoff is zero and then here this number is basically just the difference between the the sale and the payoff of the loan here so we get all our money back at the end and and this is here so the cash flow to equity is basically just the draws plus any payoff. So that gives us our IRR, which is extremely high. Uh, but this is just an example. So now we've built the debt and equity schedules. We still have something missing here, which is the financing, AKA interest, uh, expense, or interest. I like to call it the interest reserve. 
or capitalized interest. So we're going to actually create now the interest expense. So we're gonna go here, the debt balance, the starting balance times the interest rate. I'm gonna anchor that divided by 12 because it's monthly. And here we are. And now I'm gonna do this and paste it across. So here we are. This is our interest expense here. I'm going to make a negative because it's an expense, right? Boom, negative, control, shift, right, control, R to paste the formula. See, everything's a negative. Now we got to calculate our, um, our capitalized interest. Now, and the way I'm going to do that is just by using an if statement uh, because we need to see the difference between our interest expense and our NOI. So if our NOI is positive, then I know that I need to find the difference between the NOI and the interest expense and zero. So basically this can now only be a negative number and if it is if the if we if our NOI is negative, then I know there's no amount of capital that's going to be able to pay off the interest expense, and so I know that it's either the interest expense or zero. And we're going to close that. Boom. Take it to the right. In here. So let's just review. This is our interest expense, our capitalized interest. Here we have no money coming in, so all of it is capitalized. No money coming in, all of it is capitalized, same here. Here we're making $10,000, and that $10,000 offsets $10,000 worth of interest expense, which shows up here. And that's why we have to create uh, this formula here. So make sure you're following along, and practice does make perfect. So now, this is the final piece of the puzzle. We're going to do an equals minus sum here and we're going to put in our capitalized interest expense boom and now our model is completely circular so let me go here into the sources and uses equity is equal to the total times whatever percentage we're putting in here so in this case we're going to do 25 percent 25 and then the debt is simply equal to the total minus our equity. So it's actually one minus this, 75%. And so if we did turn off iterative calculations, you would see that we actually uh, get an error. So let me see if we can see that error checking circular references. So as you can see here, we now have a circular reference, which is actually what we want in this case. And so that's how you create a loan. So one more thing that I will note is that if you need more training, I do have a step-by-step -step course, which you can sign up for below. It's uh, free. I actually have a free um, introductory course that you can check out. So go to the link below and get your free modeling course and I will catch you in the next video. Make sure you subscribe. This is Noah signing out.